Lesson 7.4, use static analysis and testing tools, PyLint, PyTest, and coverage. In the previous example, we were able to look at some of the advantages of using an automated build server, but you may have been wondering how the makefile and the lint process were created. Let's go ahead and look at that one more time. If you look at this makefile, not only do we have this lint command that's available that lints the repository, the command line tool, and the actual web application, but we also have the ability to run a coverage report on the same library and also run the unit test for Jupyter Notebook itself. Let's go ahead and run each of these individually to see what it is that they actually do. So if we go here and we run Python from the command line, you can see what it does is it actually looks at the lines of code that have been covered and the lines of code that are missing coverage. And you can see that this repo mod has 64% coverage. And if we go over and look at what that test file does, we may get an idea of why it's missing some test coverage. You can see what it does, is it just asserts that that first function that was created has the ability to return back one. In order to run these tests, we can just run the make command make test. And you can see that not only does the unit test get tested, but this Jupyter Notebook get tested. The way that Jupyter Notebook gets tested is by the nbval plugin. Let's go ahead and look at how that is installed. It's installed by just selecting nbval. And then if you look at the actual command that's executed, it's Python with PyTest, and you just pass the path to a notebook. And what's great about this is it actually executes each cell in the Jupyter Notebook and allows you to actually create a more of a functional test for your Jupyter Notebook. Let's look at this ability to run Jupyter Notebooks by using a PyTest plugin. By using this nbval plugin, it's able to actually programmatically execute what you would typically execute in your web browser from the command line. What's really useful about this is it gives you the ability to actually verify that a Jupyter Notebook that you pass along to somebody else is actually a valid configuration. Let's go ahead and run inside of this um, unit test here, and let's intentionally break these unit tests. So let's go through here, and we know that this function actually returns back one, but let's change it to two. And let's go through and let's run lint, and the lint should pass this time, right? Because there's no syntactic error, we just have a bad test. And if we run a make test, we're able to see that, in fact, the assertion of one is not equal to two. So let's go ahead and push that change as well. Let's add this test, creating a failing unit test. Now if we go to the build server, you can see that the build server is also going to pick up this new command. And it's going to validate that the tests are not working any further. Again, this shows the power of how a SaaS-based build server adds this incredible layer of protection for you. And once you start to get used to this workflow of having linting and testing built in, and, and you can see how each one individually tests a different part of your code, it, you'll never want to run without it. So let's go ahead and fix that go back to this test directory, go through to test my repo. Change this to one.
Okay, let's fix this failing unit test. Go ahead and push that change. Go back again to circle CI. We'll see that it's running the latest unit test. Now we can see that it was able to run the unit test, it was able to run the linting, and we were able to see the last commit as well. Again, this shows the power of uh, SAS-based build server in action.